Hello and welcome to my complete book reading guide for Book of Hours. In this video, I'm going to cover all questions that you might have when it comes down to reading these books. I'm going to cover regular book reading, the mini game in between, the reading and comprehension of corrupted books, and of course, also books in different languages and how to deal with that. Here's timestamps down below, so if you're looking for a specific part of this video, that's where you find them. Let's get started with the basics though. So to read a book, you first have to identify it by putting it into the consider screen and smacking a soul fragment on it, and then you will receive a identified book. This has always a mystery rating on it, which tells you how many points of the specific mystery you have to fling on it to read it. So this book has 10 points of sky necessary to read it. This one has 10 grail, this one has six knock, and so on and so forth. It's quite easy to understand. The number here is the buying price, so if you ever want to buy them from the auction house, that's how many spintria you have to pay. These are none of these currency, you only get them from occult people. Right, so to read the book, you put it into the consideration screen, and then you have to put a couple of extra things in here to reach the necessary score, or at least try to get as close as possible. So we have to put in a soul fragment that is mandatory. There is no book reading without soul fragment. You should, of course, try to get one that harmonizes with the challenge. So in this scenario, it'll be fast because that has a little bit of sky on it. And then we can add in a memory and a skill. The memory can be also the uh, weather effect of the day. So sometimes it's really worth using the weather of the day to get your book done. And then you can use a skill. So skills are actually one of the most powerful points to get a mystery through. And if it has enough uh, potency, as you see here, harmony. We have beaten the challenge. If I would be starting the process now, I'd be spending two minutes in game time with reading the book, and then I'd be receiving a memory and a lesson. Two things I want to add in here. First off, the memory you will receive, you can reproduce that as often as you want. You can take books that you have already understood and mastered, put them into the consideration or into a desk, read them again, and reproduce that memory. That's very powerful because sometimes you just don't have the necessary weather, or the book is more difficult than this, because this is solvable right now. So. More often than not, your books will challenge you a lot harder than that, and you won't have everything you require to beat them at the first glance. So just like here, this book requires nine grail, and we only uh, ten grail, and we only have nine. So when you start the process now, you will get chances to fulfill the quest. Also being said. There is a random chance that you still succeed, even if the number is not high enough. But here's what will happen if you are not fulfilling the number. There will be three random effects drawn every time you do this. And these random effects allow you now to add mystery points by some other sources. Here, for example, we get a chance to add in a piece of art. So, you know, in Hush House, there's pieces of art everywhere. And therefore, we could then go for the hunt to find something like this painting here has one grail, it would resolve our issue. And there's a lot of other things, like here, this is an inspiration. This is just a random amount of points getting smacked onto the check. So typically three different aspects, all plus two, but it's random and uncontrollable. We have here a memory that we can add in, so we could for example, just use another one of these cards that we got. Or what's also quite common is a soul card. So you can add in another aspect of your soul. And from that on, it's wild. Sometimes it can be furniture. Sometimes it can, there's even a effect for everything. So all in all, you can master these things even if you don't fulfill the exact uh, score here. So in this uh, scenario, we don't have a memory that's fitting, so we have to pass. And here, wall art, we can just put it in there, and then we got this. So 
it's really important to note that uh, if there's if, if it was a drink or something it might be used up but pieces of art won't get used up also really important here these two lines that you get are really interesting and vital information sometimes you will even receive entire crafting recipes in here so read them carefully also that's really part of the fun and it would be really really a shame if you'd be skipping on these and after that like i said memories and lessons these can be transformed into skills and so on and so forth that is all so far so clear let's move on over to the topic of books that are written in a different language so some languages are unknown to you some languages your librarian already knows so whenever the language here has in the brackets behind that the librarian can read this you don't need to worry you can just handle the book like any other book this is only important for your visitors some of your visitors don't know how to uh, read Phrygian, for example, so you have to be careful around that. Languages that you don't know are looking like this. There's no extra on it, and you have to learn them. Visitors that come to your library can either give you Spintrie for showing them books, or you can learn languages by spending one Spintria and learning the language from that guy. I highly recommend you to learn as many languages as fast as possible, and I'd even go as far to say that you shouldn't even bother buying books from the auction house before you have learned most, if not all, of the languages because they just open up so many things. Okay, that is pretty easy. As a last thing, when you read a book that is written in a foreign language, there is a new slot called language, so you have to put that in. To the slot and one nice side effect is languages also happen to have aspects so sometimes the language can even help you breaking the challenge but that's only a rare occurrence good let's move on over to corrupted books so sometimes books are corrupted you see that they sometimes have these extra icons and corruptions can be very different so there's three ways I know of to beat these problems. The first solution is to check the um, corruption and in the brackets you see that this contamination affects your shaft and your health. So this is easily resolvable by not putting any shaft or health into the skill check and nothing can happen to you. The Corruption won't touch you. You'll be able to read the book just as you would be. The only difficulty here is that you'll have to get your mysteries high enough without spending a fitting soul fragment. That can be tricky at times. With the lower books, it ain't that hard, especially if you have skills on a high level, but it grows harder and harder. And this is where method two jumps on in. So when a book becomes more difficult, you see the bloodlines here goes to affect your Arab and Shore. So most of the time, it's directly aiming at the stats that you actually want to have. But as a matter of fact, it's absolutely legit to just brute force your way through. And all that will happen is that you will suffer from a malady afterwards. That means your soul fragment needs to get cured after you are done with reading the book. But that is seriously the only side effect. I'll do another guide about curing maladies, but in a nutshell, you need a fitting bed, you need some aspect to heal it, and some beverage. I'll explain more about that in a different guide, because maladies are actually a deeper topic. But it ain't that hard to cure yourself from a malady and brute forcing your way through is surely the easiest way I personally know of when you want to face the higher challenge corruptions. And the third way, and the one that I actually almost never use, is found here. You need to find a skill that's effective against infestations and has at least seven moth. So, Actually, you would need to fulfill three brackets. A skill that is effective against infestations. A skill that has at least seven moth. And a skill that happens to have grail as well, because you actually want to have that skill to help you with a skill check. So, it's really difficult. Realistically, you could 
do it similar like you did it with method one. You just don't use a skill at all that has Grail, but instead you use a skill that has Moth and beats the corruption. But I personally must say, brute forcing your way through and getting yourself a nice rest afterwards is usually an easier way to get yourself past that corruption. But you now know of all the ways that are intended. And here's a couple of last things that I personally found very helpful to know. So here's a little tips and tricks section towards books. First off, when you want to do a challenging book, like something like this, try to have at least one spare memory with the according um, aspects and one spare soul fragment. Because as you saw, the mini game will give you the opportunity to fling more soul fragments or more memories into and it would be a shame if you had none at that moment so ideally difficult books bring up two memories and two soul fragments so you have something to toss into another real cool thing that's not that obvious is the fact that you can read all books at these desks this isn't so far cool as at a desk you have an extra slot this extra slot allows you to use tools, which have also lots of affinity points, but way more importantly, it also allows you to use inks, and inks can be extremely potent. So this is a low-level ink, it only has two aspect, but mid-level and high-level um, inks can provide four and six points of the regarding mystery. If you can get your hands on it that is but especially in the high tier of difficulty books i found it really really helpful to know that these desks allow you to smuggle in a little bit more extra oomph and of course you can use that already way earlier with the other books but this is something that should really um get you some help there also really worth mentioning never use any memories that you want to hold your hands onto like lessons are a no-go because it's consumed also last point on my list you will learn to craft more powerful memories and more powerful um memories mean it'll be easier and easier to get yourself through that so if you have trouble solving the book's mysteries or you have trouble getting yourself memories so try crafting try rereading books and get yourself a list together so you have access to all the memories you can also speak to assistants to create memories that's quite random so that's a nice thing too and you can also examine all manner of different things in hush house although that creates very low powered um memories i wouldn't recommend that too much if you need more powerful memories crafting is usually way to go and yeah that's it i hope you found that helpful and leave me your comments leave me questions or if you feel like i have missed a spot or anything it's all self-researched so i am eager to hear what you have to say because i like complete tutorials okay so thanks for watching this leave me your thumbs up if you enjoyed and consider subscribing both things help me tremendously and don't cost you anything I'd be also very happy if you'd give Patreon, Paypal, or buy me a coffee a look. I'm an independent content creator and I can really use all the help that I can get and therefore, yeah, I'd be delighted if you'd give them a go. That being said, I thank you so much for watching this video up until this very point. It's very kind of you and I hope you enjoyed yourself. Have a pleasant day and see you soon.